Hello and welcome to this Computer Music Hands-On with Cable Guys Volume Shaper 4. In this video we'll show you how to use all of Volume Shaper 4's main features and look at some of the cool things you can do with them. To read the full review, pick up Computer Music Issue 211, which is on sale now. Cable Guys Volume Shaper 4 is an LFO controlled volume modulation plugin in VST and AU formats for Mac and PC with AAX coming soon that lets you design your own separate LFO wave shapes for up to three user defined frequency bands. Let's start with the basics. By default, Volume Shaper 4 is set to single band operation. In the waveform display, an oscilloscope shows the input and output levels as audio waveforms in two shades of grey. The darker of the two is output. As starting points for your own wave shaping endeavours, 24 preset wave snapshots are on hand, divided into four categories. The ducking wave set up the sidechain style pumping and ducking effects for which Volume Shaper has always been known. Trimming specializes in isolating elements of drum loops. Rhythm serves up a collection of more elaborate patterns. and basics are your standard LFO style waves, sine, triangle, etc. As well as an ADSR style envelope. There's also the local category which gives you six slots for saving your own wave snapshots. These aren't stored in the plugin itself, but per preset, i.e. this section is always empty when you first load the plugin. Whether you start with a preset wave or from scratch, drawing or editing a wave shape is done by clicking in the main waveform display to create what cable guys call points, establishing the peaks and troughs of your wave. These points can be dragged around the display freely or snap to grid if that option is activated in the right click menu. Double clicking a point deletes it and shift dragging enables selection of multiple points. Two arrow buttons shift the whole wave shape left and right. While right clicking gives access to vertical and horizontal flip functions. It's also a randomised points function that does exactly what it sounds like, randomising the positions of all the points in the display. And the undo and redo buttons let you go back and fix any mistakes. The default point is soft, giving a gently curved peak.
Right clicking a point once though turns it into a hard point. Sharpening the peak for more dramatic and precise modulation. Right clicking it a second time hardens it further into a corner. And right clicking it again returns it to its original soft state. By creating, modifying and moving points then, your LFO waveform is defined. The LFO can be synced to host tempo or run free. For the moment we've got it synced to quarter notes. Here it is playing eighths. And halves. Synced, it can cycle anywhere between once every 32 bars and once every 128th note. It's 32 bars, not that we're actually going to wait around to hear the end result. But you get the idea. and 128th note sync. Hertz mode meanwhile runs from 0.02 Hertz to 5.24 kilohertz. With extreme amplitude modulation effects becoming possible at faster rates. There are various MIDI triggering options too, which we'll get to in a bit. According to Cable Guys, Volume Shaper's biggest selling point for most users is the ease with which it can be used like an extraordinarily flexible, easy to set up and precise sidechain triggered compressor. Let's say you want the kick drum in your track to duck the bass line. Simply insert Volume Shaper 4 into the bass channel and set up a wave shape with a dip where the kick hits. Adjust the wet dry mix if the effect comes across as too heavy handed. If it's a fourth of the floor pattern you may not even need to go beyond one of the six ducking presets. Volume Shaper 4 can actually run three wave shapes at once, each modulating the volume of a separate frequency band. Frequency splits are easily set in the band split display, which can be popped out for closer inspection of its very pretty background spectrogram. The crossover frequency is displayed at the bottom of the interface when the mouse pointer is placed over a crossover handle. Each band has its own colour, green for the low band, orange for the mid band, and yellow for the high band. And the waveforms for all three are always visible in the waveform display. Selecting a band switches the waveform display to that band for editing its LFO waveform. The slope for each of the two splits can be set to 6 or 12 dB per octave. And you can also solo the current selected band by clicking the S button.
Individual bands can also be bypassed via the right click menu. Volume Shaper 4's multiband functionality makes it an incredibly powerful creative tool for shaping loops, synth pads and other full frequency parts, but it can also do the business on individual drum sounds. Here we're sculpting a kick drum, setting a long curve for the lower frequencies and a shorter one for the higher frequencies for a combination of precisely tailored low end and snappy highs. Equally useful is the ability to isolate and process specific sounds within loops based on their frequency content. To cut the hi-hats out of a drum loop, for example, set the high band to catch them and design a curve that knocks them out. Or to shorten a kick drum, target it with the low band and customise a trimming snapshot to get it to the length you want. The amplitude modulation style sounds generated at high LFO rates in Hertz mode can also be split into bands. Here we're messing up a drum loop by applying two separate AM distortion shapes to the high and mid bands only.
as well as cycling endlessly to the host door's timeline, Volume Shaper 4's LFO can be re-triggered via MIDI note input in a number of ways. First, the standard re-trigger modes simply restart the LFO cycle every time a note is received at the plugin's MIDI input. It's the mode to turn to when you want to connect Volume Shaper 4 to a synth sound, for example. By triggering it with every note, its volume modulation effectively becomes an integral part of the synth patch. Retrigger mode is also good for ducking non fall to the floor tracks off the kick drum. Insert the plugin into the track to be ducked, set to a ducking shape, then trigger it using a copy of the kick drum pad. One-shot beat and hertz modes work in the same way as the regular re-trigger modes, but firing off just a single pass of the LFO wave rather than a continuous cycle. This works brilliantly as a sort of noise gate for shortening drum sounds. Insert Volume Shaper 4 onto your snare track, say, and trigger it in one-shot mode from a MIDI clip playing the exact same rhythm as the snare. Then set the LFO wavelength to at least the length of the snare with the speed knob and adjust the wave shape to taste. The last of the MIDI modes, Pitch to Rate, modulates the LFO speed by note pitch, making it possible to play the amp modulation style sounds generated by the plugin at high LFO rates. Finally, the preset library is cloud-based. Selecting the sync option syncs your system with the master library on Cable Guy's server, uploading your patches and downloading those of other users. But of course this side of things is entirely optional, you can just keep everything local if you prefer. The star rating system lets you score other people's patches and they're yours. So that's Cable Guy's Volume Shaper 4 inside and out. Thanks for watching and for the full review pick up Computer Music issue 211 which is on sale now. Download over 30 exclusive plugins. Get hundreds of pro quality samples and power up your production skills with in depth tutorials. We break it down for you step by step, and you'll see exactly how it's done in expert video guides and producer masterclass sessions with pro producers.
Get all this and more with Computer Music Magazine every month on iPad and iPhone, PC and Mac, Android, and in print.